Welcome friends to this episode of the Sync Your Life podcast. Today, I have a newfound friend of mine here, Elise Wagner. She is the founder of functionalmedicinecoaching.org. We're going to dive into all things functional wellness today. We're going to talk about the differences between functional medicine versus traditional medicine. We're going to talk about what women really have to gain from taking a holistic approach with their health. And she's even going to talk to us about what it looks like to be a health coach. I think this is a really powerful topic. There's a lot of people out there calling themselves health coaches, but I think her angle on this is unique and something that everyone needs to hear. So without further ado, welcome Elise to the podcast. I'll have you just kick things off with you sharing your story. Tell us who you are and how you got into doing what you're doing. Okay. All right. Hey everyone. Hi, Jenny. Thanks so much for having me today. Um, I'll give you the kind of the short version of the story. Um, we're all on a journey to health or on this, on this journey. Right. And it's a never ending journey. It keeps, um, some, you know, getting deeper and more interesting, of course, but, um, my journey started when I was really young, when I was 13 years old. Um, and I've always been super intuitive and I was overweight. I was probably tipping the scales at about 200 pounds at 13. And I always had these thin arms, thin legs, but then this like tire around my belly and I looked different and I felt pretty icky inside. Um, and I intuitively knew that certain foods in me just didn't agree. I would eat certain things. I mean, I ate super processed things. Like if you're from the Midwest, I'm sure you're familiar with Sara Lee. So <laughs> the Sara Lee lasagnas, the Pringles, the Cheetos. I mean, anything that had like cheese with it, it had my name on it for sure. Um, cheese and, and gluten, right? So I, I was not happy with myself uh, physically, mentally, emotionally, and I was getting taunted at school. In middle school, I was taunted as obese Elise. So who knew you could rhyme my name or something? Um, but there you go. And I went to my mom and I told her, I was really honest with her. And I said, I don't like how I look or feel uh, and I wanna change. And for any of you who have children out there, I mean, I want you to think about if you had a, your child who said that to you and how that would make you feel. And I'm really grateful that uh, my mom listened to me and she heard me and didn't just kind of, you know, say, oh, you'll be fine and just deal with it. This is just part of life. Um, she really listened to me. And um, my mom has come from a holistic background herself and she said, um, you know what, let's start with the food first. If, if that's where you are intuitively thinking you're at and you can make this, you know, connection that certain foods and you don't agree, then let's start with that first. So she helped me to find um, a holistic nutritionist. That's who we ended up with. We started looking for dietitians. And at that time, being the age of 13, a lot of dietitians, 20 some odd, 22 some odd years ago, they would not see um, an adolescent. So a holistic nutritionist um, who I still see to this day and my daughter sees as well, she um, saw me and really looking back, that was my first experience with functional medicine. And um, for those of you, you know, you may have an idea or you may know exactly what functional medicine is. Um, this nutritionist, her name's Carol, she took a functional medicine approach in the sense that she met me where I was at. And she listened to me. We spent two hours together and we co-created a plan together that was going to work for me and with me. Um, I was ready. She assessed my readiness to change, how committed I was, and how important it was for me. So with those kind of ingredients, there was a recipe for success. And I took the information and education that she gave me and I started to implement it. What happened was over the course of two months, I ended up losing 50 pounds. And it, it was like someone just put a pin in me and I just shrunk. It was never about a diet. It was never about calories in or calories out. It was never about weighing yourself to get to a certain number. I was really taught and very lucky to come, you know, think about this now that I was really taught, you know, food is medicine. And when you can give yourself the right types of foods that are going to, you know, work with your body and whole real foods, 
you can have a really positive outcome. So that was kind of my first aha moment is food is medicine and I have to share this with the world. And I remember also being very curious and I still am. It's probably one of my top strengths, which sometimes gets me into trouble. But I <laughs> was always like wondering, well, gosh, I'm 13. I made these changes and I'm never going back. You know, once you once you experience something and you feel so good and you have such a positive, it has a positive effect and impact in your life, you know, what's the point of going backwards? I just wanted to keep moving forwards with this and learning more. And so I thought to myself, well, this is, this is, you know, information and probably a lot of people have access to this information, but why aren't we making the behavior changes necessary um, to, to actually put these changes into, into our life. And so, um, you know, I was 13, not too many people were listening to me at that time and space, you know, and it was an interesting time. I, I really had solidified a lot of values at that point in my life, health values, food values, and, and really it set me on my purpose for what I want to be doing. Um, well, fast forward, I, um, decided I wanted to become a nutritionist like Carol. She had changed my life so much and I wanted to go and do that for other people. And I went and got my undergrad degree in nutritional sciences and dietetics at University of Wisconsin-Madison. And I was taught very much the hard sciences of food and nutrition, but it was also taught in a very, I would say, a different paradigm. It was taught in the calories in, calories out paradigm, the disease paradigm, what's wrong with you? And I was always so used to just growing up with my mom who really took a positive approach to everything. She was so used to, you know, really focusing on, well, how can we make this happen and what's going well? And I just leaned into that more. And so, um, you know, the nutrition side of it was, was not really my, my favorite, to be honest with you, all the nitty gritty nutritional facts and things like that. And I would be the person in the back of the classroom, like raising my hand, like, well, how do you know that there's that many X amount of nutrients or X amount of vitamin C in an orange? Where was the orange grown? How long was it sitting on the, you know, truck for? How long was it sitting on your, in your supermarket for? What's going on with your microbiome? Like, are you able to digest it? all this stuff. So I really had a lot of questions. And um, it really, you know, I, I started thinking about health in, in a much broader aspect other than food as medicine. Um, I really thought about, you know, the mindset and the psychology behind it, and really about behavior change and what, what makes people change and why do we have more information now than we've ever had in our entire lives at our fingertips? Yet we're also one of the sickest countries and chronic illness is just skyrocketing among other things. So what was really starting to drive me about 12 years ago was the why behind it and the behavior change and the psychology. So I went out to uh, uh, Seattle, Washington, and I went to a holistic medical school out there called Bastyr University. And I got a dual master's in holistic nutrition and clinical health psychology. So really pairing food and mood and um, health psychology with, you know, nutrition and how do we really make some uh, behavior changes around that. And during that time, I got really sick. Um, I probably saw about 10 different providers or practitioners. So if you've been living with a autoimmune disorder or chronic illness and or you've known that something's not 100% right with you and you've seen, you know, multiple doctors, I want to encourage you to keep moving forward um, and keep the, keep peeling back the onion to get to the the root cause, which is functional medicine. Um, so while I was at grad school, probably seeing 10 different providers, no one could come up with an answer for me. My parents wanted to pull me out of grad school. And I said, no, I'm, I'm going to give myself one last shot and I'm going to go and see a functional medicine doctor and the Institute for Functional Medicine, the gold standard that trains 
functional medicine providers and doctors is in uh, Seattle, outside of Seattle. So I went and saw this doctor. I'm not even kidding you, Jenny. He literally looked at my all my labs, all my you know past work and stuff like that. And he's like, you have an autoimmune disorder. You have celiac disease. We're going to get you genetically tested just to make sure, you know, and he wasn't wrong. So two weeks later, I remember back in his office, I was sitting, you know, sitting on the, the bench or whatever. And he came in and he looked down and he's like, okay, the, here's the, here it is. You've got celiac disease. You have an autoimmune disorder. And I remember feeling like this wave of relief, right? Whew, we got an answer. And then this wave of overwhelm, because if you are living a gluten-free lifestyle or any sort of, um, really any, any, any changes that you've had to make, you probably know and understand how it impacts you on a biopsychosocial level. Um, and I just remember thinking, oh my gosh, I've done behavior change before. I've made huge shifts and changes in my food before, but this is, this is on a whole nother level. And I was also struggling with some body dysmorphia, all the inflammation, leaky gut, leaky brain. And I just remember thinking, I wish I could almost like clone myself who had like, didn't need to have like the exact same knowledge base as I did, but like very, you know, had some, so they could help to see my blind spots and just help me to get to where I wanted to go faster um, and not tripping up so much. <laughs> and so it was really there, honestly, that I made kind of this, um, it really was kind of a spiritual pact, you know, with the universe, like, I'm going to heal myself th so that I can go out and somehow help to make this struggle less, shorter, you know, people don't need to struggle like this. And they need to know about that there's other ways that they can support themselves and really empower themselves, you know, to own their own health. So, um, you know, I, I had graduated, I was a licensed, um, I am a licensed uh, mental health counselor and a certified nutritionist in the state of Washington. And I had moved back to Chicago and started researching, you know, is there anyone in this area that is, has similar, you know, passions like functional medicine and positive psychology and whole real foods, you know, holistic nutrition. And I found Dr. Sandra Scheinbaum, who's my co-founder at the Functional Medicine Coaching Academy. And both of us, we got together for tea and it was, I rem, I'll never forget, we got together in this small, tiny office, windowless office, no windows, super dark. <laughs> we had tea together and we were sitting on these little spree, you know, the yoga balls or whatever. <laughs> and I, we just, there was like fireworks in the room because we both had so much passion and um, just a lot of the same values and vision for functional medicine and for positive psychology and coaching. And what we realized was here's IFM and they are training, you know, functional medicine practitioners and doctors. They're the gold standard. And oftentimes they, what they do is very good. They're very good at what they do. And when they give those directives to the clients or to their patients, sometimes, not always, Sometimes, and I have experienced myself, those directives can sometimes fall flat. And what we need is someone who's got the coaching skills, the positive psychology skills, someone who can create a safe, non judgmental space to meet that other person where they're at in their journey, to not judge them, to not shame them, you know, just to be like, okay, you're here. I'm going to meet you where you're at and let's get you to where you want to go and can break down some of the information and some of the steps that it takes because I know a lot of people say behavior change is hard and I I I don't know if I want to get on that bandwagon and and say that as a belief because I think about like our phones and you give a phone to anyone <laughs> they're going to have a new habit you put them on social media they're going to make a new habit in like 20 seconds <laughs> so i think behavior change um can be fun it can be easy and it can be super helpful 
especially when you've got the right support team in place. So anyways, that is a very long part, you know, story. And I'll just kind of pause there <laughs> and see what kind of question, other questions are coming up. But yeah, in the end, Sandy and I got together with this passion to create the Functional Medicine Coaching Academy, which is an online training program where we train health coaches in functional medicine and positive psychology, among other things as well. But those are the two main uh, pillars. Yeah, very cool. Well, I, I took so many notes as you were talking, and I think it's interesting. I say this often. <clears throat> so many people are, you know, are fulfilling their passion and their calling because of their own story and struggle, right? It's like you're, you're kind of turning this, some people say, turning my mess into my message, right? Like trying to yep. communicate to people where I've struggled so that they don't struggle. That's the reason for my podcast. That's the reason for my course. It's the reason why I do what I do. There's so many things that came to my mind as you were speaking. Um, I had to laugh when you were talking about your, um, your very first, I think it was your nutrition undergrad. Uh, because when I first got my nutrition certification, I laughed because the cover of the textbook for that was a photograph of breads, like 14 different kinds of baguettes and breads. And I thought to myself, I'm taking a nutrition course where the cover of the book is bread. Like what the heck, you know? So I had to laugh when you were saying that because it made me think of my own story, but also, um, I, I do want to kind of direct us a little bit this way. We are, we're going to talk a lot today about what it means to be a health coach and all that. So we'll get to that later, but I think this is so valuable what you guys are doing. And even just hearing your story, like you and I have connected before we've talked about health coaching. We've talked about this stuff before, but hearing you share like what brought you to this and like why you see it as a need to me, it feels like such a powerful thing because I think, you know, I remember hearing somebody say in the last couple of years that they believed, um, they believe that someday in the near future, everyone will have a health coach. Like everyone has a doctor, everyone has a lawyer, everyone has, you know, you have these, you have a veterinarian, you have this and that, like as part of your life, you're going to have a health coach, right? And it, it makes total sense because the, the world or society that we've been brought up in is very much, unfortunately, this, you know, traditional medicine approach. I'm not saying there's anything against it. You guys, that my listeners of the podcast know I'm not against traditional medicine. I, there's a need for it in certain times and places. But I know my experience is the same as many others, which is, you know, sitting in the waiting room forever so that you can get that 10 or 15 minute appointment so that you can be given a pharmaceutical to try. And then the process repeats itself. Right. And that, first of all, is, as we've discussed before, like that's a band-aid solution for a problem as opposed to getting to the root cause. So from the get-go on this show, I just want to make sure we establish you know, that that is the difference between functional medicine versus traditional medicine is your story is a perfect example of that getting to the root cause, right? Peeling back the onion, as I've heard it say, said before, um, to really figure out what's causing your symptoms and what's causing your issues and imbalances so that you can get to it so that you can start to, to make those lifestyle changes or supplemental changes that you need to get to where you need to be, as opposed to this sort of hamster wheel of sitting in the waiting room, getting the pharmaceutical, sitting in the waiting room, getting the pharmaceutical. Right. And so, um, I say that because I think health coaching can play such a cool role because even myself, like having started in network marketing as a health coach, um, you know, our CEO used to always talk about how, what people are missing is support and accountability. Like there's plenty of options when it comes to fitness, you can, you can do fitness at home. You can do fitness at the gym. You can take classes. Now after COVID, right, there's workouts on demand. There's all these different things you can do. And nutrition can also be within your realm, right? Like you, everybody has a kitchen in their home. They can take ownership of their, of their eating. They can learn. We have Google, we have YouTube, right? The problem comes into play when there's not the support and the accountability. There's not someone there to say, this is how you're going to implement these lifestyle changes because this is worth it. Because I think it's, it sounds so crazy, but, and I'm sure you agree. I say this so much. What if it really was that simple? I find myself saying that question like a million times a day because people will come to me and they're like, oh, I've got this and that and this and that. And I'm not a doctor, so I'm not here to diagnose them. But I'll ask them like, well, how are you sleeping? I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't sleep. I sleep maybe four hours a night, you know? And you're like, and you're thinking, well, what if we just address that? Like, what if it really was that simple? What if your lack of focus and your appetite issues and your, your gut imbalance, like what if all this came back to that, right? Like, what if, what if it really was that simple? And so anyone listening to this, I mean, you, you guys are probably like, okay, broken record, Jenny's on her soapbox again. But I just want to say that like, if you have not taken the first step into starting a functional wellness journey for yourself, don't let 
the cost or these objections that are coming up in your head or whatever holds you back because there are lots of different options here. This is, in my opinion, the way of the future. I think this is exactly where we're heading and it's much, much needed. So I, thought, I don't even know where I was going with that. I have so many. Can I just, can I just rip yeah. off for a second? Yeah, and pop it, pop it. Share. So, okay. One thing, totally. Functional medicine is going to be medicine. It is the medicine of the future. hundred percent, hands down. Totally believe that this medicine will prevail. So I want to go back to something that you talked about. And it is this, you know, what is the, the whole idea of conventional traditional medicine versus functional root cause medicine. And I'm, I'm going to say this, there is more than enough chronic illness, disease in this world. We need both. And there's more than enough for, for all of it, quite frankly. Um, if you can visualize a tree with leaves on it, that is where I typically like to explain or kind of paint a picture of where conventional traditional medicine hangs out. So you've got different parts of the branches and you might have the cardiology branch, the you know pulmonology you know, branch, the nephrology, your kidneys, etc. So it's kind of all spread out in the branches. What functional medicine does is, again, picture that nice, beautiful tree that you have and start to come towards the middle of it and go down the trunk and get down to the root systems. That's where functional medicine goes. And we call it, we go upstream. So you know, we're going to come almost reverse engineer it. We're going to start asking not so much the question. Yes, we're going to ask the what questions, what's going on. And that's where a lot of the conventional traditional medicine is. Functional medicine is really the question of why. Yeah, but why is this happening? And also the other thing that you brought up, which I love that you said this, Jenny, is yeah, what if it really could be that simple? And I know that we're complex human beings and, um, and, and yes, but there's also, there's this beauty of, of simplicity, right? And um, the other thing about when you say, oh, if you change something with sleep, you might see a shift, you know, in other areas of your life, whether it's relationships, stress, eating, you know, movement, et cetera. Another key aspect and principle of functional medicine is that it's all a system. We're all one working together. So it would totally make sense that, yeah, if you just changed one small thing here, you might start to see some different areas shift and change as well in your life. So I love that you start with that simplicity because one, it kind of takes the pressure off of like, oh, I don't have to change everything all at once. I can just... I can just focus on like one thing right now. That's, I can do that. Makes it easier for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have, I've shared this with you and, and my podcast listeners know that my personal journey was with chronic migraine and um, couldn't figure out what the, what the migraine was coming from. And for me, it was just like a natural question of like, can we please figure out what's causing the headache? Right. And after seeing, I think I saw a total of 14 different neurologists and spinal specialists. I had so many different brain scans, MRIs, you know, everybody wanted to look at just my head. And so you start thinking like, oh, this is going to give me answers, right? Like, cause my head hurts. So hopefully by looking at these pictures of my head or whatever, I'm going to get answers. And then you, you get in the appointment over and over and over again. And you're told everything's fine. Like you're completely healthy, right? Like you're, you know, this is in your head, so to speak. Like I literally started feeling, they wanted to send me to like a psychiatrist. They wanted to send me to, to people. And I'm like, no, I have actual pain in my head. This is what I'm feeling. And so you feel like you're going crazy. You know, that was my story. And I did not wind. And I think this happens probably for a lot of people. I did not wind up in a functional medicine doctor's office as a first option. Like if someone had told me that in the beginning, I would have been like, um, no, like, but I was willing to be, I had four surgeries. I had four neck surgeries. I did. Um, I don't even know how dozens of different, um, I can't think of the word right now, like preventative migraine medications that eventually led to me having kidney stones because they developed, <laughs> that's a whole other story. Um, I did Botox for migraine. I, I mean, I was willing to do anything it took to get rid of the pain. But for me at that time in my life, it had someone said to me like, how about 
a chiropractor or how about, you know, yoga or how about a functional medicine doctor? I'd have been like, oh yeah. Okay. Like, and that is exactly what happened. I, I finally got to a point where I was, I was giving up. Like I was literally carrying pain, painkillers in my pocket to get through the day because I was sick of feeling like a burden to my husband and to my family. Mm -hmm. And I got to this point where I was just like, I can't, I'm just going to start carrying the painkillers around and I'm just going to live with them. And I'm going to take them all the time because I can't, I, I can't keep living like this, you know? And finally my, my dear friend, um, my yoga instructor said, you got to try one more thing. Like you've got to go to this functional medicine doctor that I started seeing. And I, I literally like rolled my eyes at her and I was like, oh yeah, sure. Like everybody's done every surgery on my neck. Everybody's done every scan of my head and everything is normal. So I'm sure this functional medicine doctor is really going to help. And within one appointment, um, oh, gosh. At, uh, she took me off of all pharmaceuticals. She said, I think this is what's going on with you based on your lab work, which we did in advance. I didn't have to go for like multiple appointments to get the, the lab mm -hmm. work. And my, I was basically, my body was not producing progesterone whatsoever. I had been on birth control for 12, 13 years, which everyone, including my OBGYN had told me no, that's shouldn't be an issue. Like these aren't, these headaches aren't cyclical. So no, they were all the time. They were all, that's, that was the problem. Yes, they were cyclical. They were every day. Um, but everybody wanted to tell me I was crazy and that that wasn't a real thing. And so for her to say like, no, this is probably what's happening. Your body needs some additional support. We need to look at detoxifying your estrogen and increasing your progesterone. And let's look at your nutrition too, and see what kinds of foods might be inflammatory to you that might be triggering things. And I was literally at a, a last resort. Like it was just like, whatever, like I'll do whatever it takes at this point. And sure enough, within three months of the, the right supplementation mm -hmm. coming off all of that stuff, and just really incorporating. I mean, I didn't, at that point in my life, I did not need the accountability because I was like, I was so desperate for relief. Right. I was, I was ready. Um, but it led to so many other things. I mean, it led to me starting a fitness journey. It led me to, you know, getting to what I'm doing now. And I, I think back, and I think that, you know, there might be people listening to this who are struggling with some sort of chronic issue, right? There are so many women out there dealing with, they have a diagnosis of PCOS or endometriosis. They have painful periods or irregular cycles, or they're using birth control. I just read a statistic that said 39% of women are using birth control for reasons other than birth control. And so there's all these different things out there and the, you know, and yet women are, they, they're given a diagnosis and they think, oh, this is what I have as opposed to saying, well, really that diagnosis is just a word to put to your symptoms. And so let's figure out what's causing it, right? Let's, let's dig deep. Let's go to the root of that tree um, mm -hmm. to use your analogy, to see what's going on. So I do, I want to go there next with, with my questions and just ask you, because there are a lot of women listening to this podcast, what do you think women in particular can gain from taking a holistic approach? Wow. Um, a lot <laughs> in a nutshell. I would almost split the question and say, what could you not gain? Um, what could you gain from taking a holistic approach? Well, I think it probably would be fair to define holistic um, and what that really means to someone. And uh, I'm not. I'm not necessarily here to define that for for everyone, right? I think I really believe that health is so individualized. It's it really is a personal thing. I mean, there are so many things that we are so um, we share so many commonalities as human beings, but yet we are so unique and different in our own ways, in our own genetics, in our own makeup, and what really works for us, right? So when I think of holistic approach, I don't just think from a physical or biological level. I also think um, from a mental, emotional level. And then, you know, it really kind of spreads out from there. When you start to take a holistic approach, though, which I would also say, you know, it's kind of like a zoomed out approach as well. You're looking at a situation from a 30,000 foot view and how things are really interconnected and also how there's so many different elements that could work for you. And I'm not necessarily saying get rid of the prescriptions, you know, get rid of the traditional medicine. I don't think it needs to be an either or or, you know, that type of medicine is quote unquote bad. That is not what I'm saying at all. I think it's, it needs to be an and. And what else? 
and what else could work for my body, my particular lifestyle, you know, what my needs are right now. And so holistic medicine, I think from a very simple standpoint, what women have to gain is first, I think a self-awareness, you know, awareness of their own body, reconnection, building a stronger and honestly, not to get woo-woo on here, but more loving relationship with themselves, putting themselves first. You know, isn't that an interesting, we could go down that rabbit hole, right? Of us as women, as moms and how as a society, you know, we're not really taught to put ourselves first. We're taught to put everything and everyone else first. And ultimately, right, we end up suffering. Um, so I think that there is a lot to be said just in that piece of gaining more awareness, more connection, building a much deeper relationship, really understanding your body, your needs, um, and advocating for yourself, you know, giving yourself that opportunity to run towards what it is that is going to really serve you and help you. You know, you and I, I think, have both said that, right, we have these almost internal like, gut hits, like trusting your gut, right? I think as women, we, we all have that sense that whatever you want to call it, sixth sense, you know, that internal wisdom, the intuition, that is a sense for sure. It definitely is. And I think taking a holistic approach allows you to turn up that internal volume of what's right for you and to turn down the external volume of society and everyone else telling you what you should be doing. Yeah. Yeah. I think I always like to tell women, you know, women tend to know when their check engine lights flashing, but they let it flash for a really long time, <laughs> a lot of times before they, <laughs> before they investigate. Yeah. Um, and I also, I also say often, you know, I measure everything in energy. So when, when someone comes to me, it's not about the before and after or how many pounds they want to lose or what genes they want to fit into. Like for me, it's what's your energy? Like, do you have the energy to keep up with your children? Are you waking up in the morning feeling refreshed? You know, mm -hmm. if that energy is off, pay attention to it. Right. Because I, I think sometimes we forget, like, every, like you said, every, everybody else comes first, right. Kids, spouse, even our parents, like things come ahead of us, but we don't realize that like our energy pours into them. And so if we can really just start by saying, Hey, you know what? My check engine lights flashing. I don't think there's going to, there's going to be a drug out there or, or anything that's going to necessarily cover it up. So why don't I figure out what's, what's really at the root of it. Right. And functional medicine is, is so cool. I feel like um, we've said it till we're blue in the face, but even just the ability to look at, you know, the, the types of testing that functional medicine doctors do, as opposed to yeah. anything that I ever had done with traditional mm -hmm. medicine, being able to look at your hormones and not just silo your hormones, but look at how those hormones work in relation to each other, right? They look at your endocrine system as a whole. It looks at your thyroid, your blood sugar, your cortisol, so your stress, right? Your, your sex hormones, everything is taken into effect. And so you finally can say, Hey, this is where I think I'm weakest. This is where I need to pay attention so that I can get that energy back. So I totally agree with everything you just said. I do want to, you know, for the sake of time, I want to make sure that we transition and talk about health coaching. Sure. Um, I, I, again, kind of coming back to this idea that eventually we'll all have a health coach, right? We'll have, we'll have someone who's there to sort of hold us accountable and to really help us implement these lifestyle changes. It's not easy. It's not easy. I know when, when I first was told, Hey, you need to, let's try to eliminate dairy, that was really hard for me. I mean, I totally resonated with you when you were talking about Sarah Lee. Um, yeah. For me, it was Cheez-Its, like Cheez-Its yeah. were the thing. Like I used to come home on lunch hour and I would eat like half a box of Cheez-Its with my like turkey and cheese, white bread sandwich. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I'm not here to shame because I mean, it has been a journey, you know, like it started off with me getting rid of the Cheez-Its and it's been a slow journey ever since, but it's hard. Like it's hard when, when you try to maybe eliminate a food that's been a, a huge part of your life or when you yeah. When you have to start moving more and you're working a sedentary job, like these are things that we don't talk about, you know, and, and I think there's, I see there, there being a lot of polarization in the world. I mean, being a social media influencer myself, like I see there, there's a lot of, there's a lot of Instagram fitness junkies, right. Who are in the gym. They know what to do with the equipment. They're bossing it around. 
versus a lot of sedentary living. And people think that it has to be one or the other, that you either have to be this person who's really into fitness and eating chicken and rice and broccoli for every meal, or that you, you aren't right. And there's, and it's like, no, there, there are steps in the right direction. There's a happy middle ground. There's a way to, you know, make this a, a, a long-term sustainable lifestyle for yourself, but having a health coach is going to be the difference maker, that support and accountability piece. So I'd love for you to just sort of speak to that. And I love that you guys are sort of partnered up with IFM. I like what you're doing with all that. So I'd love for you to share more. Yeah, no, I um, think a couple of points that you made about making these shifts and these changes, right? I want to go back the, to the Cheez-Its. <laughs> so, you know, there's food, is so many things to so many people. And as Mark Hyman says, you know, um, it's the difference, right, between health or disease, right, what you put at the end of your fork, you know, and I want to expand on that, just bringing in the psychological background to that, right, because, um, yes, I think food can be medicine, and it also can be um, toxic for us, depending on what we're eating. Um, and there's also this um, emotional component to it as well. I mean, food can nourish us on so many levels, whether it's biological, social, psychological, you know, emotional, right? I mean, gosh, I come from, um, you know, I'm sure we can all relate to some type of food that maybe our parents or our grandparents made for us or whatever, and the smell and like the that really fuzzy a feeling of joy, you know, or some sort of a, a memory associated with food. And so I, I really believe that food can feed us on so many different levels. Um, and so, but part of that, like when we are looking at food as medicine and, and trying to support us with our bodies or where we're wanting to get with our health, you know, that does mean that there is some foods that serve us and don't serve us. And I like to look at it and frame it that way instead of judging it and putting a judgment like good or bad or right or wrong food right because listen we don't need <laughs> we don't need any more judgment uh that's my whole piece on that but um you know and so we so where a health coach comes in is again creating this really safe non-judgmental space to meet you where you're at so let's say i mean let's say for example your doctor your practitioner comes to you and says you know you should probably go on an elimination food plan let's see what foods are really, you know, bothering you. Well, as the client or as the patient, you know, you might open up more to your health coach who has the time to listen to you, which first and foremost can be so therapeutic. Um, you know, and you might discover, hey, I, I don't actually want to do a full elimination food plan right now. That's not where I'm at. And I'm going to own that. But here's what I can do, you know, and maybe I can start with the dairy first, giving up dairy, right? And a health coach who's not necessarily a therapist, you know, but they're going to be able to listen to you, to support you, um, to reflect back to you. Um, they might say to you, you know, to, um, they might ask you, you know, what, what kind of feelings are coming up for you? And, you know, you might have a whole conversation about how it's a loss, you know, and it brings up grief, which might, you know, trickle into something else. But the fact that they can hold the space and you can actually have a conversation with them, that in itself can be so, so powerful. And just by that conversation, you as a client might walk away with some serious aha moments personally, you know, that are going to motivate you to move, move forward, um, you know, in your choices, just make, make you a little bit more aware, you know, it could just be the question of how do you feel after you have cheeses or, you know, some cheese and, and bread in the evening. And, you know, who knows what the response might be. It might be, you know, I feel really gassy and bloated. I don't really want to feel that way anymore. Okay, let's do a little bit of an experiment. What do you think about that? Or what are your thoughts on how we could, you know, experiment with um, taking this, this part of the food out just for a couple weeks, just to see how you feel. So it's a conversation and it's not a, you're doing it right. You're doing it wrong. It's absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And what's, and what's, what's, what's good for your body is different than what's good for my body. Right. So mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, yes, there are common foods that tend to be inflammatory for a lot of people, but 
um, what works for you might not work for me. And that's totally cool. Right. There's women in my, my sync digital course that say they, they are aided by additional protein. Thanks to Greek yogurt. They use Greek yogurt. I can't stomach Greek yogurt. I have a dairy sensitivity and I just can't do it. So it's different. Right. I I agree with you. Like we need to remove the stigmas around like what's good and what's bad. And instead just say, what's good for me, what's serving my body and what's not. And then take it from there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, even like I just got some testing done, some functional medicine testing. We were able to look at some intestinal permeability and lo and behold, I've got some super high histamine levels. So for me right now, things that normally I would throw in my smoothie, avocados, maybe some bananas once in a while, love tomatoes and spinach for those foods for me right now are not serving me to my highest good. So I'm having to eliminate them for right now. Right. So, and those foods we would normally, you know, classify as, Oh, those are, you know, vegetables. Those are fruits. Those are good for you. Mm -hmm. Well, it's different when you take this lens of functional medicine approach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and like you said, you said at the very beginning, you know, you learned through your own journey and I know I have too, that food is medicine. And when you start to really, I think when, you know, as, as a health coach myself, like seeing, seeing people and women in particular who, um, when they start to make the changes and they start to kind of, I I call it like that proprioception when they start to become like aware of their body and how their body feels with certain movements or with certain foods and, and whether or not it's, you know, dragging them down or, or giving them energy, it's easier to stay motivated. It's easier to stick to it. It's easier to make it a long-term thing because you start to see how good your body feels. I think most people are living in a world where they have no idea how good their bodies are designed to feel, you know? And it's just, I mean, recently I was helping a a family member recover from a surgery and the grocery request list. I was just like, okay, like we're going to, we're going to redo this grocery list. Like we're going to look at, you know, what are some foods, some foods that can help me heal? What are some foods that are going to, you know, not be sugar? I mean, sugar is a whole other topic. I'm sure we could talk about forever. Um, but it's, it's one of those things where it's like gradual steps in the right direction and, and getting yeah. that awareness of feeling how good your body is meant to feel. And then mm-hmm. being able to take the next step and the next step and the next step. So Okay. So the one, this is something that's interesting. Um, and I wanted to bring it up to you. You know, this is something that I've been asked before, um, as a network marketing health coach, I've been asked the question, you know, well, I would love to do what you do, but I'm on my journey myself, or I have, you know, at least 30 pounds to lose, or, um, I don't feel like I know everything yet to, to do this. I know my personal perspective is that what makes a good health coach is someone who shares their journey so as to inspire other people. And so regardless of where you are, even if you're at the very beginning, like, you know, you're like lying in the sand, today's my day one, you can bring people alongside with you because you're going to resonate with people on a different level. When I, I think back to like, I don't know when, I guess it was seven or eight years ago when my husband and I had a gym, um, this was years after I had dropped 30 pounds. I was working as a personal trainer. I was teaching boot camps in the morning and the evenings. I was, you know, my, at that time stories didn't exist, but my Facebook posts were like videos of me doing like crazy arm balances and yoga and all that kind of stuff. And there was a certain, um, you know, there were certain people that saw that and they would reach out and they were inspired by that. And they wanted a, a journey and they wanted me to work with them as a health coach. And it's funny because a lot of times people would say, well, I wish I could do what you do, but I, I couldn't be a health coach because I'm not at that level of fitness. Right. Or I'm not. And I like to say to them, but here's the thing, like there are so many people out there that are at your level. And if you start to do this yourself, you start to start your own journey. People see that and they're so inspired by that. Right. Like, so all of that to say, I just think that it's, you know, again, I think we're, we're going to see this sort of transformation in the future. I know that that Mm -hmm. functional medicine is on the rise. Um, this, this idea of making it this simple and taking a lifestyle approach is on the rise but I'd love to hear from you. Like, what would you just say to somebody who had that question? Like, can I be a health coach if I'm still on my own journey? I would say a million percent. And I would be there cheering you on the entire way. And so with the entire, you know, functional medicine coaching community, the reason why is a few fold. One is the world literally needs you needs your story, needs your journey, needs your contribution, your gifts. 
you are going through your own individualized journey that is going to be different and unique and, and, and specific. But like you said, Jenny, it's going to resonate with someone else. And I'm guarantee you a whole lot of other people um, who are maybe just a couple steps, you know, behind where you're at in your journey and whatever you've learned, whatever you've gained through your own personal journey, the lessons that you learned, those are things that you can certainly share, support, provide empathy, compassion. Those are the types of things that health coaches really do to support their clients. Um, and I would also just encourage people, you know, if you have a desire and a passion to share, you know, the, in the words of Dr. Wayne Dyer, who's one of my personal, you know, mentors, I have him on my little imaginary board of directors, um, but it's share, you know, share your music, right? Don't die with your song inside of you. You've got something to share. And then also, um, you know, you're here to, to share this, this gift with the world um, and start before you're ready. I, I don't think there is anything um, in this world about, you know, being perfect or being at that specific, you know, that body weight is going to mean what for you or, you know, at total health, you know, um, I think we're all striving you know, to, to work towards that, to arrive there. But it really isn't about that end destination. I think it really is the focus is on that journey and taking those steps forward, um, you know, and, and being genuine and real and authentic. I know that I personally resonate the most when I hear a real story, someone's struggle and how they dealt with the adversity I don't resonate with someone who looks perfect and they have this perfect lifestyle and that just, you know, that doesn't resonate with me because I'm not perfect myself. Right. <laughs> so yeah. I would say start before you're ready, you know, and, and, um, follow your passion really, because everything else, I truly believe that will follow when you listen to what you're here to do. Yeah. Yeah. So good. So good. Okay. So as we wrap up our time, I want to make sure that we, we touch on, you know, what do you foresee for health coaches as far as like what jobs will be out there for health coaches? What are, you know, what's on the horizon, especially with what you're doing? Yeah. Well, that is one thing Sandy and I are super passionate about and wanting to make sure that doctors, providers, hospital systems, companies, employers understand the value of a health coach. So our focus is not just on training health coaches, but it's also on making sure that our health coaches have job opportunities once they graduate, because we want to see our coaches being successful, whatever that means to them, um, but really working and doing the work with the skills and tools that they've just spent a year, sometimes longer, you know, cultivating. And again, really getting their passion and their story out there to, to serve others. So what we're seeing currently in the field right now is a lot of hospital systems sending their staff um, to get trained as coaches and then coming back to the, you know, into the hospital to utilize these coaching skills. And at the Functional Medicine Coaching Academy, because of our collaboration with IFM, um, we also are collaborating with other employment uh, uh, employers right now and corporations, we are able to provide internship opportunities for our graduates who graduate with us. So um, some of our graduates are able to work uh, and coach Institute for Functional Medicine providers um, who are going through their training. So the doctors really can experience and understand the value of a coach. And then we have employ um, corporations and employers who are working with us. Uh, one company is called Slalom. They're out of, um, based in Chicago and their employees are getting connected with our coaches to, to get coached because of course, as we're seeing, you know, out just around globally, especially employers are really focusing on the health of their organization, but that comes back to their employees. So they're starting to integrate health coaching, which is really, really cool. So we're, the focus and the goal is that 
every doctor has a health coach in their office. And we want to keep spreading that out to the hospital systems, you know, employers, et cetera. So there is there's plenty of opportunity out there. It's I would say right now, I think it's really a blue ocean. I know that there is a lot of health coaches out there. Um, there's only about 4,000 functional medicine certified health coaches right now. So it's a good opportunity, good time to, to really become a coach. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a beautiful vision that you guys have. I think it's, it's so needed. Um, my grandpa was an entrepreneur and I remember sitting down with him when he was 96 years old and saying, what made you start a trucking company, you know, 80 years ago or whatever. And he said, um, I saw a need. He said, I saw a need and I just, I followed my passion and I followed my, my calling. And it's so true. I think, you know, a lot of people that listen to this are, are women, women who already embrace exercise, women who are obviously wanting to kind of get to that next level of their own health and fitness and wanting to learn about hormone health and this functional approach. Um, and so if you've ever thought about health coaching, check this out, I'm going to have you direct people, you know, where can they find more information from you? How can they contact you? Like what's, what's the next step there? Yeah. Well, if you're interested in functional medicine and learning more about the program, we have some specialty courses and even some free courses on our website. You can head over to functionalmedicinecoaching.org. Come and find us on social. We're on LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn. You can find me just first name, last name, um, but you can come and find us at on Instagram at functional med coach and then LinkedIn and, and face all the social channels. You can find us functional medicine coaching and or at least Wagner. So I encourage you to connect. I love connecting with people, hearing their stories, supporting them. Um, so I just encourage yeah. you to yeah, keep keep following your passion and what what really motivates and drives you. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Well, as usual, you guys will link everything up in the show notes so that you guys can just swipe up and find Elise on social media and check out the website yourself when you have time. Elise, thank you so much for taking time out of your day today for sharing your story, for sharing your vision for what health coaching looks like in the future and um, for everything that you've shared today. Oh, thank you. Thank you for listening. Thanks for your awesome questions. And yeah, thanks for holding this space. So take care, awesome. everyone. All right, cool. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.